Alhamdulillah min ash-shaytanir rajim bismillahirrahmanirrahim faqala rabbukum ud'uni astaghfir lakum amin ya rabbal alamin alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin arrahmanir rahim maliki yawmiddin iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in ihdina siratal mustaqim siratal ladzina an'amta 'alaihim ghairil maghdubi 'alaihim waladdallin amin Allahumma ajwa shamalal muslimin wa kristiyan wa lumad fi madinat dabab وسلم دائما مجتمعنا هذا بسلم والأمن والتقدم في بلدنا هذا آمين يا رب العالمين ربنا لا تزيغ قدوبنا بعد جهد تنوهب لنا من لدن رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا تنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصلى الله على خير خلقه سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة ما يسيبون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين يا رب العالمين In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen Our most gracious heavenly Father We come to you today to praise and worship you And give you thanks for all the things you continue to provide for ourselves and our families. Father, we humbly ask for forgiveness for all the times we have offended you. When we forget to acknowledge your presence in the image of our brothers and sisters, and for moments we fail to be good stewards of the blessings you have given us. Continue to guide and protect each one of us, Lord, that we may always walk in the light of your everlasting love and mercy. Grant us, Father, with your comfort in times of distress and with your strength in times of weakness. Bestow upon us your unending grace and healing that may, may in turn become instruments of gentleness and compassion to others. We ask all this in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with a prayer and the intercession of our Blessed Mother. Amen.
Ayan, good morning sa ating mga teachers around the country, ang ating mga masisipag at mabubuting guro na kasalukuyang alam ko ay medyo nagchecheck pa ng mga worksheets, ng mga modules, and ng mga online assessment na ating pinagdaanan sa nagdaanang linggo. We are live here again sa Educational Technology Unit Facebook page, Casio Calculators, Philippines Facebook page, and Mandaluyong Association of Mathematics Teachers Facebook page, and we are being broadcast live at the YouTube page of Educational Technology Unit and Mathematics Associates, Mathematics Teachers Association of Mandaluyong, especially uh, spearheaded by the Education Program Supervisor of Mandaluyong, Mr. Restituto I. Rodelas. So I think this is our uh, 14th uh, session of It's a Math Tech Day. Casual technology sessions. For this, they will be discussing, and this day will be discussing start and probability, the wonders of random variables. And to formally give us an overview about our topic this morning, and to introduce our speaker, let us all welcome our guest uh, host this morning, Mr. Romel Jan Avalie. Good morning, Sir Romel. Good morning, everybody. Magandang buhay sa lahat. Hello, Sir Bads. Ayan. So, I am here to introduce our uh, speaker for today uh, and to give us an overview about uh, the topic about the, the wonders of random variables. In fact, in the division of Pasig City, uh, Unlike the other division, we are now offering the subject statistics and probability this semester or this first semester. So I am excited to learn a lot of uh, things or a lot of uh, strategies in uh, teaching statistics and probability using, of course, our technology, using our Casio class Bs. So our guest speaker for today is Kurt. Currently, a math teacher at Makati Science High School. She obtained her Bachelor of Secondary Education degree, major in mathematics under the Commission of Higher Education or CHED Scholarship Program, and has completed the academic requirements for Master of Science in Mathematics at Philippine Normal University. Now, she is pursuing to complete her master's at the University of Rizal System, Antipolo. She is also an MTOP lecturer and an MTOP exemplary teacher for 2019. She had been a lecturer and speaker for different math and pedagogical contexts and was one of the regional trainer in Priamlas of 2018. She is also a module writer for senior high school and for the, for the division of Makati. She is also a book author for elementary and high school math. Talagang bigatin itong ating speaker for today. And most of all, she is a Casio ed teacher for four years and counting. Without further ado, it is my honor to introduce our speaker, Miss Reverie Inere Vargas. Hello, sir. Thank you Good for morning, the Master. introduction. Good morning, sir. Yes. That's why we're here not to be a blessing to others. I yes. hope we, we learn something relevant today. Yes. Excited, sir. Excited din ako at kinakabahan. <laughs> yes. So... Let's start, sir. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Yeah. So before we have our discussion, I would like to say first that um, we're going to do simulation. So in our discussion today, we're going to do simulation of the different things that we um, we have for statistics. Yeah. And we're going to do a simulation on how are we going to discuss this in class. Okay, so that it will sa somehow help us to see the relevance of the use of technology in our synchronous discussion or in our own 
um, ways of discovering things for statistics and probability. As we know, it's been quite a while that we have statistics and probability in grade 11. But it is all, there's also a need for us to see a different venue of discussion because nowadays, online na nga po. Sa classroom, napakadali nating i-monitor how our students learn. But also, the students need to identify if who's going to guide them on the things that they are learning. And that's why we have this session on which it will actually help our student and at, at least help us as well on how we're going to go through about our discussion in class using technology because we face our children with technology nowadays. So let's start. Let me share my screen with you. Now, I hope you can see my screen now. Yan. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see Napono. Yan. Okay. There you go. I think you can see my screen now. Okay. Now. Let's start with our discussion of Casio classes. If we are going to look at this, there will always be a situation in our life. So that's what's wonderful about statistic, statistics, because it's all about the situations that we have in our lives, that we encounter in our daily experiences. Just to give you an example, when we buy drinks, yan, Okay. So I'll start with it. When we buy drinks in a fast food restaurant okay, or a food stall, how sure are we that we will get the same amount of liquid in our drinks as others? We are not really sure because have you ever experienced it dining with friends in your favorite uh, fast food stall or restaurant? Bought food combo with a drink and it felt like your friend's drink contains more liquid than yours. Have you ever experienced that? Parang minsan alugi ako ah. <laughs> but really, it, it really happens. In this situation, it is definite that there will be a slight difference in terms of the amount of liquid in a medium-sized drink. The result, which is the amount of liquid, would be random. But even though it's random, it doesn't mean we don't have any idea on the capacity of a medium-sized drink. What we do know is that it can go a little beyond 21 ounces or a little less than that. But the thing is, we have an idea of how the range of values for this. This is how I start my class in senior high school when I talk about um, random variables. The randomness of what will come out. Another example would be the randomness of the result of dice rolled when playing snakes and ladders or Monopoly. One more example would be the card you will draw next when playing a game of card, 21. So in these things, if we will start our discussion with something that they experience, it will be easier for us to draw out the topic or to draw out conclusion about it. The individual value of the random variables are not that predictable. But we can look at the outcome of previous occurrences, which will somehow give us a feel or an idea of the behavior of random variables, like when you toss a coin three times. How? Through recreation or simulation. I remember reading a profound description of simulation as means of allowing us to explore the odds that didn't happen, but could have happened. So if you're going to look at this scenario, it shows, to, it shows us that learning statistics is actually getting the feel or the idea of daily experiences we have in life. Kapag nagsimula tayo in our discussion in this manner, the students will be able to see na, ah, okay, there are uh, random variables actually happens on daily experiences that we have. And it does. It really, it really is the experience that the students should have. Okay, let's look at one situation. 
Okay, let's look at Mang Wan situation. Siyempre, Mang Wan ang example natin kasi nga we talk about. And I have an example of milk tea because it's something that is very, siguro yun din yung interest ko. And at the same time, it's the interest of a lot of people at this time actually. Mang Juan's milk tea business that sells milk tea of varied flavors. Yan. Mang Juan would like to analyze the sale and look at the progress of his business. So, gusto ni Mang Juan makita kung ano bang progress ng business niya. He wants to do this because he wants to plan the schedule of his employee and see if it is the right time to expand his business, knowing that we are in pandemic right now. So this is one thing, this is one way, no? maybe you're wondering what am I talking about? This is one way on how actually we can discuss the situation in with our student, discuss how how the whole concept of random variable will actually have or will be applied in their daily experiences. So that's what the, that's the goal of Mang Wan. Knowing that, Mang Wan collected the data of the past three months containing the number of milk tea purchased by each customer who make transaction. So what he did to be able to find out if he is capable of expanding his business or if he can devise a schedule for the for his people because there are things that we are struggling nowadays because of the pandemic well, shows the number of milk tea let's say this is the table it shows the number of milk tea this is the number of milk tea and it also shows the number of customers who bought the number of milk tea so if you're going to analyze the table, the number of milk tea is we have one, one milk tea. How many ordered one milk tea? There were 120 who ordered milk tea. If we are going to analyze, if you are a customer who bought three orders of milk tea in one transaction, where will you be counted? Exactly. If you're a person who bought three orders of milk tea in one transaction before, then you will be counted for, from the 83 number of customers. You're one of them. Now, another thing. How about if you are a customer who bought five orders of milk tea? Where will you be counted? If your answer is you will be counted on the 25, exactly. Now, we can actually use this on how we discuss in class. We can have storytelling, we can have table of values, we can relate it to their experiences so that they'll understand random variable more. So if you're going to look at this in the given table, we can define X as the number of milk tea a customer orders. So X is the number of milk tea A customer orders. Note that the variable we are referring to here, the x, is different from the variable we use in algebra. Uh, though it has the same characteristic of taking on values, but the random variable x here can take only five values. It's either it can take one, two, three, four or five. In this case, a person can have one order of milk tea, two orders of milk tea, three orders of milk tea, and so on until five orders of milk tea. Thus, the possible values of the random variable x are one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and five. We call this, sometimes we call the one, two, three, four, and five as mass points of discrete random variable. Yes, this is discrete random variable because when we talk about anything or any amount that is countable, then it's a discrete random variable. Now, let's move on further. We estimate the probability for each value of x by finding the relevant, uh, the relative frequency from the experimental data. So how do we find the relative frequency? How do we find the probability for this case? We can get the total of all the number of customers in our data. So how do we do that? We add 120 plus 100. Okay, let's do that. That's 120 plus 110 
plus 83, plus 42, plus 25, and the total is 380. Therefore, the total customers in our data is 380. To get the relative frequency, what we do is we divide 120, the number of customers per transaction. So 120 divided by 380, that would be 120 divided by 380, and the answer is 6 over 19. We click on SD to change to decimal. So it is about, about 0 0.32. Now this time, let's take on the second column. That's 110. Get the relative frequency. So 110 divided by the total, which is 380. And the answer is 11 over 38 or 0 0.29. Then the next thing is to get the relative frequency of the third column. That is the number of, with three number of milk teas divided by 380. And the total is 83 over 3,800 or 0 0.22. Next, we go on 42, okay, divided by 380 equals 21 over 190 or 0 0.11. Notice that we rounded off several times, and if we're going to add this, that will be equal to somehow 0 0.96. So if we are going to get the, the last column, that would be 25, divided by 380, and the result is 5 over 76. We click on SD to change to decimal. That is around 0 0.065, but I'll write 0 0.06 so that it will be equal to 1 which is equal to 100. Now, given these values, when we remove the number of customers, that will form this table. This table is the distribution of X, which is the number of multi customer buys, looks like the given. Then, if, we, if this is the probability to visualize this further, we can put this as a dot diagram. The dot diagram will be somehow like this. See, the ones are 32 items, which is somehow like a percentage for, uh, distribution. After that, it put together with you. After that, we have a history that has got that. And from this, uh, this actually came from the set of data that is out of the data, we have this probability. So if a customer will buy tomorrow, what is the probability? that that cost then if i am a customer and chance that i orders of milky the chance is i have zero percent chance that i'll i'll order two orders of milky When we have the, the lesson done, just asking, okay, key in your calculator, get the relative frequency. But as a teacher, when you are showing what you're doing to them, let's let's find the relative frequency. And then I key in the values in the calculator. It seems that the calculator is already part of our discussion. That's how it is nowadays. If you're going to look at it, will the students be computing on their own? Um, 
one item at a time, if they have their calculator, then it will be a good help for them, especially in statistics. The thing is, they should be able to uh, to know when to use it. But when while we are discussing, habang nakikita nila how we are discussing things, and then you, we are actually doing it, the students already have a feel that, Ah, that's how you do it. That's how you find the relative frequency. It will be easier for them to internalize and remember what you did because you showed them how to do it. Tama po ba? So this is something that, this is one topic in statistics that we can um, do. This is a simulation. Parang, um, if I am the teacher, this is how I'm going to do it or discuss it in class so that it will be easier for them to understand. Yeah. I hope this will be a good help to our teachers. This is just one part of our discussion. Yes, and let's continue. This time, then we have the dot diagram I presented to you so that the reason why I presented the dot diagram so that they can see that this is actually this actually came from the 0 0.32 in percent. That would be 32. So we have 32 items of the ones, and, items, and so on until six items of five. So if we are going to graph it, it will be graphed in this way. Yeah. So they have a view already of random variables. The next discussion that we're going to have, we will try to discover the properties and we will try to discover the properties of discrete probability distribution. But how are we going to do that? We are going to do that by observation. But as a teacher, when you do this in class, the first thing that we have to know is that on ER. Uh, on ER at 12, there is a 0 0.3 chance. It is 4.3 chance. Point. So what's the probability that five nurses will be busy at 12 noon? 0 0.232. There is a higher chance that a nurse will be busy during this time. Why? Because it's pandemic time. We know it already. So given this data, the students understand the situation. The next thing that we're going to do is to explore on explore on the discrete probability distribution or probability mass function, yung properties niya. So how are we going to do that? First, let's let's ask our student to observe the probabilities. What have they observed about the probabilities? What do we expect as an answer? Yeah. We hope and serve the observation that we can do. At least I hope they will. The next is that all values are between 0 and 1. Yeah. Between for this case. No, that's, that, that's what we expect for their observation. Then when they have these two observations, get the first pedi, the first property. Uh, other than being non-negative uh, non because all probability should be positive. The second is it should be from actually from 0 to 1. But in this case, they will observation of between 0 and 1. That's fine. We can just reiter because they already have a background about probability when they were in grade 8. Yeah. And then after that, the next thing, let's give them a task. What's their task? Their task is to add all the probabilities. Let's ask them to add all the probabilities. Okay, so they'll be doing it. And then after our student do it on their own, we can give them um, one minute to do that. After they finish doing it, then it's, turn for, it's our turn to show them how adding everything. And let's see the result together. If we add everything, that would be zero point. 043 plus 0 0.157. Ah, sorry, that would be 57. Oh, in calculator, it's okay not to put the zero. I just need to put zero so that the students will be able to see the exact replica of the number that we have in the table. 164 plus 0 0.232 plus 0 0.240 plus 
0.164. And the result is 1. From there, we have the second property. Now, we may ask our student for the second property and first property that they stated on their own words. Then after that, of course, we can verify their statement. So what do you think will be their statement? So we can present this already. Probabilities of discrete probability distribution. Properties of discrete probability distribution. Number one, the probability of each value of random variable must be between or equal to zero and one. In symbol, it's shown. The sum of all the probabilities of all values of the random variable must be equal to 1. In symbol, we write it as shown. Or, pwede rin natin banggitin yung about, um, it's the probability that talks about the norming property. The first one, we can include the non-negative property because, as we know, probabilities is actually between 0 and 1. Ayan. This is um, the second topic that I want to share with you on how we can do activities your to the properties i mean the properties will not directly come from us but it will actually be coming out of the students by observation and by doing certain tasks that we ask them to do so this is one way on how we can discuss the properties or how we can let our students explore on the discrete probability distribution or the properties of this create probability distribution and so that's the second thing so the first thing is about how we discuss random variable and how we get the relative community a uh, relative uh, distribution this time what we discuss is we explored on how they can um, identify the properties of discrete probability distribution by observation and also by asking them to identify the um some by asking them to do the task yeah i hope everything's clear about this so let's continue to the next slide okay let's have another example this time okay before we go back to the classic properties, with the given properties, we can also determine if the given can serve a proper probability distribution of a random variable. This is another example. Now, if we're going to do it manually, what we're going to do is we're going to get the probability of each value. Ask our student, can you please get the probability? Maybe they're wondering, how do we identify whether it's a valid probability distribution or not? We can by simply substituting the value of x with 1, because as what's mentioned for x is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, the probability of x with 2, the probability of x with 3, the probability that x is equal to 4. Okay, if we are going to do that manually, we can actually have 12 over 25x is equal to 12 over 25 times 1, which is 12 over 25. Yeah, and that's one thing of doing it. Now, sometimes our student would not want to do it that way. You know? So we put it in decimal because they are more familiar in decimal. Pwede din. Can they have it in fraction? Yes, probabilities can also be written in fraction and percent. Now, we can use, there's different ways of doing it. If, you, if we want to show this to our students, we can, or if we want to use this as teacher, if we have our calculator, if we have our class with, with us, the best thing to do it is to go to table. So other than doing it manually, so pag ginawa natin siya manually, we have, we just key in the values, that would be 12 over 25, okay, times one, and the answer is, the answer will be fraction here, but we'd rather have it in decimal, so it's 0 0.48. I'll write it here. Either way, they will be able to arrive at the same value. Okay, now, what about, is there another way of doing it? Yes, there's another way. We can go to table. That would be, okay, that would be clicking on menu 
and then we go to table, that would be nine. So we click on nine. Then we key in the function 12 over 25 X, 12 over 25, and then the variable X. Take note that the variable X that we're going to use is the variable under the on button. Okay, and the answer is, we click on equal sign since there's no other function, we click on one to four only. So we start with one, we end with four. Uh, before you can go to the next step, you have to press on equal sign, step one, because one, two, three, four. And we have the values. These are the respective probabilities, 0 0.24, 0 uh, 48, 24, 0 0.16, and 0 0.12. There you go. So yan, may sagot na agad. But if you want to teach this in your class, pwede. If you don't want, okay lang din. So let's key in the values. So that would mean, sige nga, i-check natin if that's correct. Our answers here are 0 0.48. Ah, we have it already. So I'll erase that one. Sorry. That's the first item. So we have there 0 0.24. Yan. And here we have which is equal to 12 over 25. Can you see this part? Yeah, my fractional part na siya. So 12 over 25 yung una. If we go to the next item, that would be 6 over 25, it says here. If we go to the next item, that would be 4 over 25. And if we go to the last item, that would be 3 over 25. If we are going to look at these cases, and that's let's copy the decimal forms 16, 0 0.48, 0 0.24, 0 0.16. And the last one is 0 0.12. Now, if we do the computation manually, are we going to arrive with the same values? That would be 25 times 2 is equal to 12 out of 50 which is correct, 6 over 25 when simplified. So it's true for all. That would be, in the next item, we have 12 over 25 times 3. That would be 12 over 75, which is equal to 4 out of 25. Yes, and then the last would be 12 times 25 over 4, which is 12 over 100, is equal to 3 over 25. Good, equals 0 0.12. Now, if we're going to look at this, Okay, did it pass the first property? If it passed the first property, the non-negative property at the same time, it's between zero, uh, it's from zero to one. Yes, it passed the first property, then it's a check. How about the second property? Let's validate. It says here that the sum should be one. Is the sum one? Let's key in our values. So we go back to menu one for calculate mode. Again, that's menu nine table if we want to do it fast. Yeah. Uh, as a teacher, if you want to share it with your students, pwede rin naman po. So how do we get the sum of one? We simply add everything. That would be 0 0.48 plus 0 0.24 plus 0 0.16 plus 0 0.12. And the answer is one. There you go. So it satisfies the second item. Thus, we can say that this is a valid probability distribution, or it represents a valid probability distribution. So let's go to the next item. We have the same thing here. Okay, same, same given, but maybe we can go back to that later. No? So we can proceed with our next discussions. Now, let's go to the next item. So this is how we can validate whether a given formula, uh, they call it formula or function, it represents a valid probability distribution. Yeah. Okay. But have you seen the ease of use of technology? It's not like it's abrupt that we use the technology. It's like a partner already that we have in our discussion. That's how, um, that's how convenient it will be if we have our emulator when we are discussing probability and stati st statistics and probability in our classes. Because it's 
it's something that's available. So if the students are having difficulty in their computation, okay, get your calculator. As long as they know what they're doing, then it will not be a problem to them. It will be a big problem if the students do not understand or do not know what they're doing. Yon, yun po yung magiging problema niya. But if they know what they're doing, then the use of technology will be easy for them. Just like how we're doing it now. Para siyang part na ng classes natin. So this is something wonderful. So let's continue. And now, have you ever imagined doing an experiment? Diba? When we do an experiment, remember, when tossing a die, tossing a die is an experiment that we do. And the outcome are the sample space. How many sample space do we have? We have six. You can get one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven in one toss. Ah, hanggang six lang pala. No seven, the probability of that zero. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, imagine tossing a die 6,000 times. If it is a fair die, then it will be easier for us to understand. We would expect, yeah, if it is a fair die, have you wondered what would be the average outcome if you roll a fair die 6,000 times? Imagine 6,000 times. You would expect a roll of about 1,000 ones. 1,002s, 1,003s, and so on until 1,006. So how do we, let's get the average of that. What would be the average value of the outcomes obtained in this situation? If we're going to look at it, that would be, we're going to get 1,001s plus 1,002s plus 1,003s. And so on until 1006. These are our expected outcome. We divide it with <laughs> 6,000. Six if we are going to do that, the result will be what? Okay, let's use our calculator you know, for this time. Although we know already the result, our students, let our students explore. What if this happens? Sige nga, can you please try working on that? What will be the result? Then let the students explore on that. After that, show the computation. So we have 1,000 times 1 plus 1,000. You have to simulate the values so that your students will not be confused with the discussion. Ah, okay, mom is trying to key in the values or the formula that we have here the expression that represents the average of the tosses that we have 6,000 times. So we have 1,000. This will take quite a while. Okay lang yan. Learning takes time. Okay, 1,000 fours plus 1,000 fives. We're almost there. Plus 1,006. Maybe you're wondering, ano kaya yung gustong pa ilabasin ni teacher? Later, we'll see. What are we trying to find out with this discussion? If we have 6,000, then the answer would be 7 over 2. Or in decimal form, take note that if you want to put it in decimal form, you may click on SD to change it to decimal. That would be 3.5. So. The weighted average of the six possible outcomes, one, two, until six, with weights provided by the relative frequency, is 3.5. Remember that 3.5 isn't a value that we can observe if we will do the experiment. But this means that doing the experiment, which is rolling a single die several times, and getting an average or mean of the total possible outcomes, we therefore conclude that the average tends to be close to 3.5 as we increase the number of times we roll the die. This also implies that the more rolls we do, the closer the average will be to 3.5. So now we already have an idea on what we are trying to come up here. We are actually trying to come up about the mean or the expected value of the random variable. Let's continue. This is one way on how we can present it in class. And when we talk about uh, mean or expected value, another way would be this. 
given the suppose we want to find the average number of watermelon sold in any seven fruit stands as indicated by the figure analyzing uh, let's consider the mean as a separator to the left side and the right side of the illustration by looking at this it seems that there's a balance of values that we have so we can actually put a separator here I, okay sorry sorry blue okay we can really actually put a separator here okay it seems that this represents the middle because we have one two three and then there one two three and then we have a value here so that's 27. so by illustration by analyzing the illustration we can say that the mean or expected value is 27. but let's try to validate our our concern now let's consider the mean as a separator since it's a separator to the left side and the right side of illustration let's have another way of doing it let's get the average of the numbers on the left side of 27 since the illustration is balanced let's start with this value so we get this starting from this value to here how many numbers are those we have 26 25 24, 23, 22, 21, and 19. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we have eight numbers. So let's also get the average from the other side up to this point. So we have 28, 29, 30, 31, 33, and 35. This is one way on how we can share um with our student on how they can better understand expected value or mean of random variable by illustration and the one earlier by simulation. If you want, you can ask our student to do the experiment of tossing a coin, uh, to, uh, tossing, uh, tossing or rolling a die. So if we're going to do this 27, let's get the average as what I've mentioned. Let's take it in a different view. Let's add all the values from 19 until 26 and divide it with how many one two three four five six seven eight eight values what would be the result so let's do that in our calculator again so we have fraction for division 19 plus 20 plus 21 plus 22 until 26 And then, I sorry, I was not able to put it back. Okay. And divided by eight. And the answer is 45 over two or 22.5. So let's get in 22.5 here. On the other side, let's get the sum at the average from 28 until 35. So that would be 28 plus 29 plus 30 until 35. Divide it with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. As we say, it's balanced, so it's also 8. OK, now let's do this again. Fraction and then 28 plus 29 plus 30 plus 31 plus 32 plus 33 34 and 35 i okay 35 i expect an answer of let's see divided with eight are all the values correct 28 30 okay that's correct you can you you we have to remind our students as well that they key in the right values or else it will be a challenging part for them because the answers will be different 31.5 so the answer is 31.5. Now let's add all these values. 31 point, uh, let's get the average of 31.5, 22.5, and 27. If we get that value, that would be 22.5 plus 27 plus 31.5 divided with 3. What would be the answer? Let our student explore first. Ask them to do the task, and then they will find out the answer. The answer would be 22.5, sorry, plus 27, plus 
0.5. Okay. Divided by, since it's average, we divide it with 3. The answer is 27. And that is the mean or expected value of the given item. So the answer is 27. So how did we verify? We get all the values on the other side and the other side. And then 27 as the mean of the illustration. Then we get the average. And the answer is still 27. So that would represent the expected value or mean that if we do this repeatedly, if we do the trial repeatedly, then that will give us an idea. Thus, the weighted average of the six possible outcomes, one, two, six, weights provided by the relative frequency is the given. So if we are going to look at the idea, mean being the separator, the best description would be assuming that the x value is an unbounded seesaw in both directions, where we put weights which corresponds to the probability at each associated value of random variable x. Therefore, the mean, okay, this is the mu for the symbol for mean, okay, the mean is a point where the CISO balance. In other words, it is the center of weights of the observation. So from there, from the experience that the students had, we were able to define what the mean of expect or the mean or expected value is of the given variable. But we let them explore on how they're going to do it. And that's one thing. The mean is considered as measure of central location of a random variable. And also we say that the expected value or mean of a discrete random variable x can be computed by first multiplying each possible values of x, just like what we did with the die, by the probability of observing that value and then adding the resulting quantities. It can be the summation of the product of the mass points and their corresponding probabilities. So that's how we get the mean of the variable or as shown in the given. Okay. So that's one thing on how we can explore on mean or expected value of random variable. And okay, this is the third item. So I hope everything is um, clear. And this is something that we can share with our class. If you're going to see again in this activity, what we did is we have illustrations. In the first activity, we had a little of when we explore on random variable, we had activity of like storytelling and then find visualizing. On the second activity, when we discussed um, properties, what we did is we observe and then after that, we asked them to do tasks and elicit from them the different properties. In this case, we can actually show them, ask, show them illustration of how it happened and let them imagine on how things will be if this situation happens. And if we repeatedly do things, it will be closer to that particular expectation. So that's another thing, no? Then the, th the fourth would be on, this is something interesting, and expected value or the mean. We can apply it now. So again, let's apply it. There are two ways of doing it. Okay, we can do it by, since we already know the mean, uh, we are multiplying x and px. This will be easier for us to find the expected value if we are given the activity. We have to explain again what this is all about. So the number of combo meals purchase per transaction is given for lunchtime. So no combo meal. What is the chance that a person will not buy a combo meal, rather pwedeng a la carte ang bilin niyang meal. Ilan ang chance that it will happen? The probability would be 0 0.03. What is the probability that a customer, when a customer orders for lunch, that he or she will order three combo meals? The probability is 0 0.30. So if I am one of those person in line during lunch at this time, I medyo maaga pa po, no? What's the chance? that I will actually buy four combo meals. Oh, there's a high chance. There's a high chance that I will buy four combo meals of 0 0.28 chance or 0 0.28 probability. Why? Maybe I'm going to buy for my friends already who are already seated in the second floor. And then while I 
it happens, right? I mean, it really happens that you order for your friends and then they just give you money so that no, not everyone will go to line and others can um, do certain tasks if they have tasks in school, no? Kaming mga teacher ganyan. Okay, tayo pala, tayo mga teacher ganyan. No? Ikaw na lang bumili then yan. So there's a possibility that a person will actually buy four combo meals in one transaction. What's the probability? 0 0.28. Now, how do we find the expected value? If that's the case, what is the average number of combo meals that a person will buy? So we want to find out that value. If we want to find that value, then we... We are going to use the formula for the expected value, which is the summation of the product of the score or the value of X by its observed probability. These are observed probabilities because this actually came from an old data. Okay, now, if we are going to do that, let's get the probabilities, uh, the product of each probability so that we can get the sum. This one, no need to, to use the calculator. Of course, that's zero. And this one, no need also because we know that any number multiplied by one is the number itself. Some students will use calculator still. But if we actually give them an idea that this is zero and this is actually any number multiplied by one by reminding them the properties in multiplication, then it will be easier for them to remember that. So we have to do it to show them that while we're doing 2 times 0 0.12. We can do that, but sige, let's use our calculator in this case. Okay, so that's 2 times 0.12, although we know the answer already. Again, you may or you may not include the 0. That would be fine. 6 over 25 or 0 0.24. There you go, 0 0.24. How about if it's 0.30? 3 times 3, oh, I will not use my calculator anymore. But if you want to, that's fine. Okay, 0.28 and 4. I Okay, sige. Let's use our calculator. 4 times 0.28. See, the students will be able to decide because it will take them longer time to press on the calculator if they already know the answer. So, sulat na lang nila yun. Parang tayo din teachers. 12. 5 times 0 0.22. 5 times 0.22, and the answer is 11 over 10 or 1.1. So we already have all the values here, but this is not the final answer yet. We are asking for the average. What is the average number of combo meals? So we need to get the summation of the product of x and their probability. So since this is each value, we need to add everything. We're not going to put zero anymore because anyway, its value is not, um, uh, there's no value for zero. It's 0 0.5. So we start adding from 0 0.5, 0 0.24, plus 0 0.90, plus 1.12, plus 1.1 or 0 0.9. Pwede lang din na 0 0.9. So let's use our calculator. That would be 0.5. Uh, sorry, that would be 0 0.05. So, yeah, let's imitate what we have there 0 0.24, 0 0.9, 1.2. I, I hope I 1.12, pala, and then 1.1. And the answer is 341. 0 0.5. Let me check the values if I put it correctly 1.1, 1.12, 0 0.9. 0 0.24, 0 0.05. Okay, 0 0.05. That's correct. And we have 341 over 1,000 or 3.41. Therefore, the expected value is 3.41. So at an average, if a lot of customer will go through this process, then we get the average of all those. It will be close to 3.41. So approximately, if we're going to look at it, a customer at an average would order three num uh, three combo meals at an average. Yeah. So I hope you were able to get that. There's another way. The reason why I put it in here, there's another way of doing it. That's when we can use the table in in our um, calculator. 
One is we can use a spreadsheet. Just like in Excel, we also have somehow like Excel format in our calculator. You can just look for that, look for spreadsheet. Okay, and you have there, we can key in the values that zero, one. On the first column, we key in the values of X, two, three, and four. On the second column, this is another data, no? Let's key in, let's find out the, what is the expected value of this? We key in the probabilities, that would be 0 0.18 equals, every, every cell, you put an equal sign, 0 0.44 equals 0 0.27, and then 0 0.08, and 0 0.03. This is another way of presenting the expect, solving for the expected value. You, if you want to teach this to our student, that can be. But if we're going to key in, now how would the, three, the, the product be placed? Remember, just like in spreadsheet, we, form, we write a formula, but there can only be one formula written for all the values. And how are we going to do that? There is a uh, way for us to do that in calculator by clicking on option. Then we click on fill formula. In the fill formula, since we are expected to multiply the x and the p of x, which is in column A, remember this is in column A, and this is in column B, and we are looking for values in column C. We are here at the moment. So how, what are we going to key in here so that it will be true for all? Now, we can do that. Okay. We can do that by introducing to you the alpha function. There's two functions in your calculator, the shift function or the yellow functions. So it will, if you click on shift, all the yellow functions will apply. If you click on alpha, it's like a third function, the red functions, all the red functions will apply. So the equal sign is already there. No need to click alpha, uh, no need to click alpha calc. But rather, we can key in the formula already. We are multiplying A and B. So we can multiply them by clicking on alpha, negative, which will show A again. I'll do it. Alpha, negative, so A will show. Since our cell is in A1, then it should be A1. We are multiplying it with column B. So we need to multiply, we click on alpha and B is on degree minute second is a red function of degree minute second. So again, I'll click on alpha and then I'll click on degree minute second so that B will appear. I'll do it again. Alpha, degree minute seconds, since it's the, B is the red function of degree minute seconds and we click on one. Since we, we are in cell C1, we are multiplying A1 and B1. Now. For our value, since the range of values or the range of expected value will appear on this part, then we can key in from C1 until C what? This is one, two, three, four, five, five, five rows. So until C5. Do you get that? These are the range of values. C1 to C5 will give us an idea where will the formula be applicable. The formula will be applicable from C1 until C5. Then we click on equal sign. Again, equal sign. These are the values or the probabilities that we have for this one. So there, we can simply copy them. Teacher, pwede bang manual na lang? <laughs> okay lang naman. We're just showing this so that our students will actually have an idea of how to go through about this. 54. Let me check. Notice that when you look at the cell, look at the, un, the, uh, the values under here. The value is not the value of 0 0.54 shown in the equal and then, but what is shown is the formula because it's acquired from the formula of A3 times B3. So that's 0 0.54, 0 0.24, and 0 0.12. Yeah. Um, if the students will be able to learn this, it will be a great help for them. Kasi nga, mas madali nilang, pag nagkaroon na sila ng maraming columns in table, sobrang helpful itong part.
part na to or this menu of classes for our students and for us as well as teachers if we are going to work on our I'm, I know we are still working on our uh, answer keys. If we are going to do that, this will be a big help because it will act, give us an idea already. Ah, yun yung sagot. Okay. Now, the next is we're not yet done. We need to get the sum. To get the expected value or the mean, we need to get the sum. How do we get the sum? We add everything. There's two ways of doing it. You can do it manually or Pwede naman dito na rin sa spreadsheet since we are already in spreadsheet. Again, we're looking for the sum. So we can click on, since we are going to work on a formula, kailangan may equal sign. How do we click on the equal sign? Equal sign is a red function of calc. So what do we do? We click on alpha, calc, equal sign will appear. What will we do? We will add. You can add. But it will take longer time because you're going to write alpha C1 plus alpha C2 plus alpha C3 until alpha C5. But there's another way of doing it. I'm not saying you cannot do it that way. You can, but it will take a lot of time. No, as teacher, siyempre, importante ang oras sa atin ngayon. Ang dami-dami natin ginagawa. So what we can do is we can click on sum. How do we find sum? We click on option and then sum is not there. We click on arrow down, there is some. So we click on four. Then, since we're adding C1 until C5, we'll put it as a range of value. So again, alpha C is a red function of x raised to negative one. So we click on alpha, then x raised to negative one for C. Then we click on one. For the range of value, siyempre kailangan may colon. Where's colon? So we click on alpha, then the um, symbol for integral. Yan. And then from where? From C1 until where? Until C5. So click on alpha, x raised to negative 1 again, so that C will appear. And then we click on 5. Then we close that. And we click on equal sign. And the answer is 1.34. That's the expected value. This is just another way of doing it or finding the expected value. Are we good? So we've done, we're done already with ex exploring expected values using classes or using the technology that we have for us, a very powerful tool. Yun lang, no? It's so sad that sometimes we are so contained on using the calculate mode. When I say calculate mode, I'll go back to menu. One, that's the calculate mode where you perform operation. Where, in fact, we can do a lot with the calculators that we have at home. Then next is, let's explore this. This time, I will be asking us to explore other students also. And if you have your cash emulator with you, I hope you can um, follow. I'm, I'm trying to do it as, as detailed as I can. So let's try. In this case, let our students explore on two formulas. This is the formula for what? Yeah, I'll give it already. This is the formula for variance. And these two formulas are formulas that we can apply in variance. Let's, let's ask them to perform this operation. Okay, guys, kindly do this. Okay, when they do this already, they know that this is zero. Okay. If that's the case, this is zero point, ah, uh, one times 0 0.44. Let's just copy the one in previous slide. That's the same, right? 0 0.24, 0 0.12, 0 0.54, 0. Point, ay, square pala, sorry. No, 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 no. Okay. Let's try to square the values. So this is x. Let's square x. That would be 0. This will be 1. 2 squared will be 4. Three squared will be nine, and four squared is sixteen. X squared. Next, we multiply x squared. Okay, I'll use another color. We multiply x squared and probability. So we multiply this and this. Okay, that would be zero. I don't have to use my calculator, so that would be zero point forty-four. But I want to use my calculator here. That would be point twenty-seven. times 4, and the answer is 27 over 25, or 
I'll do it manually first. Um, 0 0.08, that's 9 times 0 0.08. 0 0.08 times 9 is 18 over 25 or 0 0.72. Okay, then next is for 16 times 0 0.03. So that's 16 times 0 0.03. Anyway, it's commutative. So either way, we have 0 0.48. Now, given these values, let's identify the formula. Okay. So we have these values, ask them to do uh, to follow the one that we have in the formula. We know already that the mean is, the expected value is 1.34. So what we can do is get the summation of the probability times x squared minus the square of the mean. Okay, let's ask our student to do this. If we ask them to do this, we expect that we're going to add this. So let's add it using our calculator. We have 0.44 plus, oh, it's not clicking, 0.44 plus 1.08 plus 0 0.72 plus 0 0.48 and that would be 68 over 25 or 2.72 so that means this is 2.72 minus the mean which we already have the mean is the expected value 1.34 therefore it's 1.34 squared that would give us 2.72 minus Okay, let's do that because it cannot be that the students will just see the answer. We have to find 1.34 squared first. 1.34, then we square that. It's okay not to put it in parentheses because anyway, it's positive. That would be 1.7956. If that's the case, let's subtract the values. That would be 2.72 minus 1.7956, okay. And the answer is 2,311 over 25 or 0 0.9244, 0 0.9244. So ask them to keep this value in mind. We go to the next item. This one, let's have this. In this case, I would like to use my Okay. One way, I already showed you how to use a table, so I'm not going to use it. But since I have the score minus the mean, I know that the score is zero minus the mean, which is the mean is 1.34. The expected value is 1.34. So I need to write it down. 1.34. Therefore, I will always key in 1.34 in every column. So I'd rather use the store value in my calculator. I'd rather key in 1.34 and assign it as value for x so that I will not keep on keying in 1.34 every time I press that. So what will I do? I will key in 1.34 store as a value for x. So I will click on x. That means when I look at the value, okay, Shift recall is shift STO. The X is equal to 1.34. So I already assigned the variable X as a value for 1.34. Again, how did I do that? I click on the 1.34 and then I click on STO to store the value as a variable X. I click on X, that's 67 over 50 or 1.34. To know that if I assign the correct value, I click on shift STO to see all the values, and I have here x is equal to 1.34. That means if I will be getting this, the difference, I can simply do this. Okay, I'll click on on button. 
okay then i'll click on zero the score minus the mean of 1.34 instead of keying in 1.34 i'll just key in x okay since i'm squaring that i will need to put this inside the quantity in other um in other items you can you have to get the the difference first before we get the square in there's an additional table you may do that but i put it this way so that it will be easier so i square that and the answer is 1.7956 since this is a big number i'll store this so i'll click on store a that means i store this as a value for a let's see if it is stored i'll click on shift and then recall c a is equal to that first value i have now i will continue with one uh, open parenthesis one minus x for the mean because i assigned that already squared and that would be 289 over 2500 or 0.1156 i'll store that as b okay Therefore, let's see if I was able to store it correctly. And I wasn't able to write it. So I'll write it here. It's 1.7956. This is 0 0.1156. Okay. So the next one is to do that for B. That would be open parenthesis to minus x quantity squared and the answer is 0 0.4356 i'll store that as c which is 0.4356 i'll put it in my table then i'll continue with open 3 minus x squared equals 2.756 i'll store that as a b c d already 2.756 so that's 2.756 five five sorry 2.7556 and the next one would be four minus x squared that would be 7.0756, 7.0756, and I'll store it as E, S-C-O-E. This is another function that you can use. I'm just showing different functions that you may have missed in a calculator, kaya lang sayang kasi yung functions niya. So what I can do to get the, uh, the probability, this time I need to get the probability the product of the probability and the square of the difference of the score and the mean. So what I will do is that I'll get A because I already have the square. So I'll click on alpha A times, because that's the first one, times the probability, which is 0 0.18. And the answer would be 0 0.323208 or 0 0.3232. Okay, next, I can store that, okay, store as A again. Then let me go to B, that would be alpha B, ah, okay, AC, alpha B times the probability of the second row, which is 0 0.44, and the answer is, 0 0.050864, 0 0.0508. Okay, ah, 0 0.09. That would be 0, ah, sorry. That would be 0 0.09. I'll erase that one. Okay, let's continue. This is really long now. <laughs> uh, let's say alpha C times 0 0.27 and the answer is 0 0.11 I, I wasn't able to store uh, anyway i'll just add it manually seven six okay one two or 0 0.1176 up to four significant figures let's do it up to four significant figures 
or four to five significant figures. Okay, let's continue with, uh, let's store that, store as C. Now, let's check if I were able to store everything correctly. Okay, AC, shift, ST, uh, recall. Hindi ko nga na-store si B, oh. Okay, okay lang yan. So, I can do B again. Let me do B again. 0.44 times alpha B is equal to, so okay, then I'll store that, S-T-O-B. Okay. Then C would be 0 0.08 times alpha D equals 0 0.2204, 0 0.2204, and that would be store it as D, and last would be 0 0.03 times alpha E, which is equal to 0 0.2123, 0 0.2123. Now, I'll store this as E. Uh, there might be a slight difference in the sum because I in, in the items that we store, there are four uh, six decimal places, while the values that we have here are actually two decimal places only. Let's see how different will be the scores. So let's add A. Uh, sorry. How do we do that? We have to add everything. Ask our students to add everything. That would be A, alpha A, that would be alpha negative, plus alpha B, that would be, uh, B would be alpha degree minute seconds. C will be plus alpha x raised to negative 1, plus D would be alpha sine, plus E would be alpha cosine. And the answer is 2311 over or 0 0.9244 which is the same as what we have from the previous slide, 0 0.9244. Therefore, we can ask our, we can tell our students that x squared times px and then the quantity of the square of the difference of the score minus the mean multiplied by its observed probability. When we have this, these are both formula for the variance of random variable. So we did not give the formula per se. We showed them that this too can be formula for the variance of a random variable. Then we can already give them the formula for the standard deviation. They can just get the square root of that. So going back, since the values are the same, let's get the square root of 0 0.9244. We are in calculate mode. So that is 0 0.9244. I sorry. We need to key in square root for a square root of. 0 0.9244 and the answer is 0 point approximately. So the standard deviation is approximately, let's go here, and the standard deviation is approximately 0 0.9615 or 0 0.96 approximately. 0.96. There you go. That's all about standard deviation and yeah, standard deviation. Yeah, and this is one thing which on which we can discuss standard deviation in class without give, just giving them the formula, but letting our student explore on different tasks that we will assign them. Yeah. And now for our next dot topic is on there. Given our discourse of 54 students, now let's have a short break. Yeah, make sure heavy yung pinag usapan natin kanina. Eto naman, let's try to find out paano yung mga basic calculations na meron tayo on descriptive statistics, kasi leading towards inferential na yung pinag usapan natin. So let's recall, there is one feature in our calculator that actually provides us with venue to get the mean. Yeah. What do we do? We can get the mean, the variance of the population, the standard deviation of the population. Meron din siyang pinaprovide na 
variance at standard deviation ng sample, makikita din doon. Now, let's see which part of the calculator will show us. Ito yung pang descriptive statistic lang. Parang lesson break muna tayo kasi medyo heavy, heavy, heavy. Pero meron pa tayong other part of our discussion, but let's focus on this. So, how do we go about it? Okay, may scores saka may frequency yan. Ano to? Um, ungroup data kasi wala naman siyang 14, 2. So, 14, 15, 16, 17. If this is the case, this is ungroup data. Okay. Now, if we are going to set this, set this up in our calculator, how do we do it? We can click on menu and then, okay, six statistics. Yan. Since this is one variable, it's a univariate data. So, we click on one. Yan. Paano yun walang frequency? Ibig bang sabihin, we click on 14, 14 times. Hindi pa lang siya nakaset up, but we can set that up. How do we set that up? We click on shift. Then, shift is a yellow function. Anong click natin? Yung menu. Kasi set up is a yellow function of menu or second function. So, we click on this. We need to find statistics. So it's not in this four. We click on down. And statistics is there. Number three, we click on three. Then you have their frequency. Are you going to turn it on or off? It's already off. So I'd rather turn it on now because I need it in my data. I click on one. So I click on all the values, 14, 15, ay, sorry, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, up to 20. Okay. Is, is it correct? Up to 20? Is that 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14? I think I have the correct value. Always validate what you ever input because if there's a wrong input, then it will give us a different answer, definitely. What's good about technology is that the main frame or the main, uh, the brain of technology is still us. If we use it properly, then it will actually maxim it will be maximized. It will get its full potential. It will actually show its full potential. The thing is, if we will, we're not able to use it properly, we'll have a problem with that, with that because we are limiting the capacity of the, the technology that we have in our, even in our synchronous and asynchronous classes. Okay, that's three. Then what do we do next, teacher? We can, once everything is already key in, we can click on option. Okay, lahat ba napasok na natin? Yes, I think tama naman yung data. Let's verify. Always um, have a habit of verifying the data. We click on option, then three one variable calculations. So we click on three, and these are all the values you need for descriptive. You have the mean, you have the sum of the x, you have the sum of x squared, you have variance, 2.68, you have this um, uh, population variance. The population standard deviation is 1.63. It also provided sample um, variance and sample standard deviation. N is 50, minimum is 14. Yeah. Q1, is, quartile 1 is 16. Although the quartile 1 and 3 are not interpolated, yeah, the mean is 17 because we do interpolate that. Uh, this is discussion in grade 10, I think. Yeah. And we have the maximum value of 20 minimum. It gives you already a complete view of your data. Now, um, go back. You can click on AC. Do not click on on bottom because I'll show you when I click on on bottom, it goes back to zero. Okay. So we click on menu one again for calculating mode. So that's a page break, a lesson break. Let's move on to our discussion. Next, do you know that in our calculator, we can find a probability when a mean is given and a standard deviation is given? How do we do that? First, let's find, let's illustrate the given. We will focus on finding probabilities using class ways in this case. First, we go to menu seven. And to find the probability, we go to menu. And then, okay, we can navigate that. What does, what's the header for menu 7? That's distribution. We can click on 7. If you're going to look at this data, let's visualize the figure first. We know that the mean is 40 in a normal distribution. Continuous to, kasi nga, ano siya, normal distribution. No? So, in a given probability, I blue na lang. Ay, okay, sorry. Let's click on blue. Para ang pang-shade ko ay red. 
in the given distribution niya. Okay, I'll try my best. Kahapon ko pa to pina-practice, but I don't know. Okay, yon. Hopefully that's fine. Okay, we have the mean of forty. So the mean is here. The forty is here, and the standard deviation of four. Okay, we know that already. So the mean is forty. Forty. We know that x is a normal distribution such that 40 and 16 this is uh 16 is the variance variance but the deviation is 4 so the standard deviation is 4 this is what we know this is 40 and we are going to get the probability where x is less than 34 so con 34 if this is 40 34 is located at the left side of 40 so 34 is here so that would be, let's put an, a red in that. Okay, this will be the line. But sabi, x is less than 34, so we have this shaded part. Now, if that is shaded, me, mean of 40, okay, our sigma is 4, which is the standard deviation. So the next thing to identify is what in the calculator are we going to key in? Or which from the four choices, again, let me repeat that. We have menu one first, calculating mode. Sorry. I want to go to menu one first so that I know. Let's recall how we're going to direct that. When we already have the illustration, we can click on menu. And then we click on seven for distribution. and. We click on equal sign. Since this is a continuous distribution, we click on two. So that's normal cumulative distribution. So normal cumulative distribution would be two. Let's click on two. Then you have the lower and upper. We have a problem here because we know that this is actually asymptotic. If that's asymptotic, it means it will not actually reach zero. That's fine. We can key in zero here because we have to key in a value that's close to that. And then that would give us close, even if we click on one. Then the lower would be zero. Let's just key in zero because it will be the smallest value that we can have. And then for the upper, we click on 34. That's 34. Yeah, that's 34. Then in standard, we click on equal sign. The standard deviation we know is four. We click on four. And then after that, in the mean, we click on 40 because it says in the problem, the mean is 40. And we click on equal sign. The probability of this is 0 0.0, .0 at 0 0.06 let's go to four four significant figures 0 0.0668 there you go okay so that's how we do it let's have another example the probability with a mean of 40 and standard deviation of 4 Considering that it's x is greater than or equal to 25. Okay, let's visualize that first. No, no, I'll use blue. Okay, that would be here. I'm getting used to this already. <laughs> then 25 would be here. But then I need... Uh, okay, sorry. I missed out on something here. I need to erase my boundary yeah the boundary should be a broken line because why i use less than any but either way since we are talking about area the boundary doesn't matter but we have to give a go uh, the right illustration for the given that's why i corrected that item but will that affect the area no, it will not affect the area. It's just a boundary that's given to us. So the effect would be on the boundary, whether it's a broken line or in this case, it's a solid line. Why is it a solid line? Because I use X is greater than 25 is included as part of the solution. 
Okay, there. It's a solid line, but it says here x is greater or equal to 25. So if it's greater, then it would be here. Remember, I know that this half is 50%. So I know I have an idea that my value will be greater than 50%. Remember, the mean cuts the distribution into two, into 50, 50 part, 50%, 50 50% 50 part. So how do I do this? How do I key in this value? Again, we click on AC. The lower would be 25 in this case. But in the higher, let's click on a value that's way, way higher than 40. Why do we need to key in value? Remember, it's continuous. Even if we click on the highest value that we can, it will be closer to the end of the line. So let's have a very, very high value for that. And that would be, I know, that's too much. Let's have that. And that would be 4 still. And it's 0. Point, okay. 0.99 for significant figures. 0.9999. Okay. So 0.9999. So that's the area of this is 0.9999. Now let's go back to the given. Pano teacher kung this one I changed it. I added more zeros than I placed earlier. Will it be the same? Let's check. It will be the same. I mean the four significant figures or at least Two or three, two to three to four significant figures will be the same. That's 0 0.999 still. As what I said, it's continuous. So that's how I get the probability given the standard deviation and uh, the mean of the given. Let's move forward. Let's go further. What about if there's a boundary? If you're going to look at this, ah, I changed the mean already. This time the mean is 34. And the standard deviation, a variance. So I give the variance. The variance is 25. That means if 25 is the variance, that means my standard deviation is 5. Remember, um, standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So I'll, let's illustrate this item. How do we get if it's like that? So that would be this. Ah, the mean is 34. So 34 is here. 32.5 is a little, ah, let's use red, be consistent, okay. Let's have 32.5 here. So that's 32.5, and then we have 38.6, a little further, 38.6. And it's between, so this is, this is what I want. What is the probability of this part? To get the probability of this part, I can actually use my calculator. How will I do that? It's easier this time because I have the lower and upper values. What's my lower value? I don't have to identify what values I can have, but I have 32.5 for the lower value. I do not have to guess for the upper, but I'd rather have um, 38.6 which is, ah, but I changed my standard deviation of 5, and then I also changed the mean of 34. Then I click on equal sign, and that would be 0 0.4391. So the probability is 0 0.4391 of the four significant figures. Okay, so the area here is 0 0.4391. Let's continue. Let's have one more example for this. How about this? Find a probability with a mean of 34 and variance of 25. Same thing. We have a standard deviation of 5 and a mean of 34. Therefore, let's analyze. So this is a different figure. Okay. Let's click on the blue. Okay. I hope that's, that's fine. The mean is 34. We have, okay, a little here, 32.4, and somehow close also, 36.7 as our boundaries. So we click on the boundaries. And let me go back. Oh, okay. I remember, again, this is not shaded. Yeah. Okay. Broken line, dapat yan. Here, it's a solid line because it's equal with equal to. So let's use red. 
we have a problem though with the given because it says here x is less than 32.4 that would mean this area and x will be 36.7 x is greater than or equal to 36.7 so that would be this area if that's the case we have a problem there are two ways of doing this. I'll show you first way first, and then I'll show you the second way. The first way, what we can do is get each item. Get the area where the probability is less than 32.4. Get the area where the probability is greater than 36.7. And once we have this, we can add them. Okay, how do we do that? Okay, let's click on AC again. Uh, we have less than 32.4. So, kapag less than, zero to. Zero na, iset na natin yon. Tapos, ang lower, ang higher niya, or upper, is 32.4. Ang standard deviation ko ay 5 pa din. Ang, ay, sorry. Let's see, AC. 34 pa din ba? Okay, 34. That's good. So, I click on AC. That would be 0 0.3745. 0 0.37 approximately 0 0.3745 up to four significant figures 3745 correct correct how about 36.7 upper so i'll click on ac i get the probability of the other side that would be the high the lower is 36.7 and the upper would be anything that's very very high and then I have the same standard deviation and the same mean. So I'll just click on equal sign. And that's 0 0.2946, 0 0.2946, up to four decimal places, uh, figures again, 0 0.2946. If I have this two, I can add them. That would be the area of this. That would be, um, I'll go to calculate mode first on menu. 1, that would be 32.4. I sorry, that would be 0 0.3745 plus 0 0.2946. And the answer is 0 0.6691. So the sum is 0 0.6691. So that means that's the area of this too. Now, what's the other way of doing it? We can actually get the unshaded. Remember the unshaded, the area in a normal distribution is one. Area is one, remember? Therefore, if we get the area of the unshaded, the area of the shaded would be one minus unshaded then I'd rather get the area of unshaded. How do I do that? I'll get the area of 32.4 between 32.4 and 36.7. So I'll get the area. I'll go again to what menu is that? Menu 7, exactly. Menu 7 tayo. We click on 2. And the value would be 32.4, the lower value. This is easier, as what I've mentioned, yung between, laging madali lang yan. 36.7, then the standard deviation is 5, then the mean, and the mean would be 34. Okay, and the value would be 0 0.3309 to 4 significant figures. 0 0.3309. Ay, hindi naman siya nagmatch, teacher. Yes, because that's the unshaded. Now, to get the area of the shaded region, we have 1 minus 0 0.3309. Let's go to calculate mode again. So we click on menu 1. The calculate mode would be 1 minus 0 0.3309. And the answer is 0 0.6691. So either way, we're going to get the correct answer. There you go. That's how we can use that part of your calculator. Kasi sayang naman kung hindi po natin siya magagamit if we are going to give this kind of problem to our students. Now, 
What if we are given the probability pero pinapahanap si X? Is that possible? Yes, that's also possible. If we're going to look at the situation, let's analyze the situation. We know that we have a mean. Okay, this is different, no? Kasi kanina, hinahanap natin si probability. In this case, we are given the probability. We're given the mean of 40. The variance is 16, so the standard deviation, yun naman na kailangan natin, no? Is 4. So that means 0.7 siya, so 70%. So ibig sabihin, if we're going to analyze that, this is 40. Paano nyo malalaman kung nasan yung boundary? Remember, it's 70%. This is, um, this is 50%. This is 50%. The other half is 50%. And the other half is also 50%. So pag sinabing 70%, Either dito sa kabila, left or right. But since X is less than the boundary, so definitely our boundary is here. Nandito si X. Na nawawala. We don't know its value. But we know that, I'll erase this already para hindi ma-confuse. Okay. Let me go back to that. What we know is that this is actually 70%. That's 0.7. That's 70%. But we're looking for this. How do we know it's here? It's this is less than the value we are looking for. So if it's less than the value we are looking for, definitely the shaded area would be on this part. So that's what we know about the given. Definitely, we cannot use the previous items item that we used because the probability is already given. What are we going to use in that case? We are going to use the inverse, which is still on that. We are still going to menu 7, but this time we're going to use 3, which is the inverse normal. We are given the area. The area is 0 0.7. And we are given the standard deviation, which is 4. We are given the mean, which is 40. Just have to find x. How do we do that? You simply click on equal sign, and that's 42, approximately 42.2 decimal places lang, o kaya 1, okay na yan. Kasi normally, ano naman to, whole number, ganyan, pero hindi, pwede siyang may decimal, yan. So, that means x is equal to 42.1, yan, hanggang 1 decimal place muna tayo. So, if x is 42.1, how do we verify whether our answer is correct? We can go to the one we did earlier. Paano yung gagawin natin? So, we're going to go to menu 7 again. And then we click on 2 to verify kung 0.7 ba talaga ang magiging resulta. Of course, there are decimal places after 1. Ang value niya nga is 42.09 and so on, di ba? So, therefore, the lower value, since it's going here, it's approaching infinity on the left side, then that would be zero. So yes, zero na ilagay natin. Sa upper, ang ilalagay natin is yung nakuha nating value, which is 42.1. Ang standard deviation natin ay 4. Ang ay balik natin because hindi natin nabago yung uh, 40 then. Okay, nandito na pala, 40. And then we click on equal sign, so that is 0 0.7. Oh, yun yung probability niya. Of course, there are extras because nga, hindi naman exacto yung number na nilagay natin na value ng x. So, approximately, the probability is 0 0.7. It matches the given. Therefore, we have the correct value for x. Ang value ni x is 42.1. So, kung i-analyze natin yung situation kanina, so it means that the probability of x less than 42.1 is actually 0 0.7. Yan, ganyan yung idea about when you're given the this values. Let's have another value. Okay. Another example. This time, okay, yung greater than naman. Paano kaya kung greater than siya? Okay. Now, remember, yung area is area of the given. To 70. Medyo mahihirapan tayo kapag nasa right side. So, we'll have a different point of view here. So, alam natin na ito si 0 0.70. 0 0.70 pa rin. Kaya lang, x is, okay, the values of the variables are greater than the value of the boundary. So, if this is 
40. Uh, okay, standard deviation is 4. And this is, where's X? Definitely, nandito si X kasi more than 50% ang 70. Ito, 50 na. E, mas mababa si X sa boundary, sorry. So, boundary natin. Okay, this time, wag ka nang mali to. O, broken line na siya. Then, andito si 70%. E, sinove na natin kanina eh. Ang area kasi nito na nakaset is yung nasa left side. So, e, paano to? Nasa right to. Pag sinove natin siya using the formula, ito ang lalabas. So, what are we going to do? Since this is 0 0.70 and the area of the total is 1, remember? Kanina pa natin siya pinag-usapan. Therefore, we can actually get the complement of 0 0.70. Therefore, this is 0 0.3. Yun nga yun yung kukunan natin ng probability. So, the probability of x is less than is or equal to is 0 0.3. Yan. Yan ngayon yung gagamitin natin kasi since shaded siya. Anyway, pareho naman ang x na makukuha natin doon. So, if we're going to key in that, paano nga ulit? Pag probability ang given, we click on menu 7, then we click on 3 for the inverse. The area is 0 0.3. Same ang standard deviation, same ang, mi ang mean niya. Therefore, the answer is 37.9. So, the answer is 37.9. Okay. Sige nga, tignan nga natin kung tama yung 37.9. So, kunin natin siya. On ulit. Paano ulit? Menu 2. This time, kunin natin yung... Ay, menu 2. Sorry, menu... Wait lang. Menu 7. Imaginary yan. Okay. Let's click on 2 para ma-verify. The lower value would be, sige, gamitin natin yung nandito. The lower value is 37.9. Ang gamitin natin yung P of X is greater than 37.9. Is 0 0.7. Kasi pareho lang naman yan eh. X pa rin yun. Yun pa rin yung value ng boundary natin eh. So, ang lower natin ay 37.9. At ang higher natin ay mataas na value. Pagka natin. Okay. Ang standard deviation natin ay 4. Ang mean natin ay 40. Let's click on the value. Ayun, 0 0.7 pa rin siya. Tama. Pag binaliktad nyo, ganun din. 0 0.3 naman yung lalabas. But still, the value of x is 37.9. That's one thing, no? It's 11.45 already. We have 15 minutes left. I hope we can finish this. Okay. Let me discuss this with you. Paano naman kung may between? Ayan, nawawala yung isa, but we know that the boundary is 28. So, let's visualize this item. So, this is the normal distribution. We know that our mean is 40, our standard deviation is 4, but we know that the boundary here is 28. So, we have a broken line on 28. E sabi 30% daw. Hindi natin actually alam kung before 40 or after 40, but we'll just set X here. Palitan na lang natin mamaya kung may ano. And this is missing. We're asked for the probability of the one below uh, between is 0, between is 0 0.3. If that's the case, then we can actually, okay, first, kunin muna natin tong part na to. Okay. Since we're looking for X, kailangan nating makuha yung part na to. And we know that if that's 0.3, then this is how much. We know the boundary of 28. So, pwede natin kunin si P of X is greater than 28. Ano kaya yung probability niyan? Kukunin lang natin siya dito. Paano natin kukunin? Punta tayo sa AC, uh, menu 7, 2. The lower value is 28, eh, yeah, uh, x is greater than 20, uh, less than pala yung kukunin natin graph. Sorry. Okay, let me erase that part. Since we're going to get less than or equal to. 
less than or equal to or less than, okay lang naman kasi boundary lang naman siya. No? So, x is less than or equal to 28. That would be lower is, again, 0. Upper is 28. And then, standard deviation is 4. Ah, let's wait. Let's look at the, I wasn't able to see the mean, 40. Okay, that's it. That's 0. Okay, for a while. 38. Ah, what did I use? 28. Yeah, 28. That is 0. 0.001. That's too small. Let's change the value to 38 maybe. Okay. So yeah, let's change the value to 38. If that's 38, let's go back. That would be 0, 38, then 4, and then, okay, much better because it shows the illustration na. 0 0.3085, okay. If that's 0 0.3085 and this is 0 0.3, then this whole thing is 0 0.7. How do we know? We add. Okay. Let's add. Let's go to menu 1. Ay. Okay, on. For a while, wait, menu one. Okay, calculate mode. 0 0.3085 plus 0 0.3 is equal to 0 0.608. So we have 0 0.608 for the whole thing. Therefore, we can find x in this case. Pano, ganun ulit. We click on inverse and then 3. Now, we have 11 minutes left. Let me discuss with you yan, yung x and y. How, how does x and y? So, if we're going to look at this, this is how we present to you okay, these values on how we, get the, how we get the value of x given the probability and given the mean and the variance. Now, I will not... Uh, uh, push through on this anymore because after this you can actually go for finding the probability of uh, finding x by getting the menu seven so yeah, let's finish i think we can finish the given first so the area is 0 0.608 0 0.608 plus 0 0.3 the standard deviation is 4 and the mean is 40. With that given, we can find x and x is 41.09 or 41.1. There you go. That's how we actually do it. So let's continue with our discussion. This time, let's focus on bivariate data. Ah, meron rin pala niyan sa calculator. Yes, we also have that in our calculator. Okay, how do we go about it? We can actually find a bivariate data in menu 6. We can click on menu and then 6. We're done already with one variable. I showed you earlier what values we can acquire from that. This time, let's go to bivariate data on regression. Okay, since frequency is something that we don't need, we click on shift, set up. We may disable the frequency, so we click on 3. And then I want to switch it off, so I click on 2, so that only x and y will appear. Anyway, I'll put my data here. x are values given in a variable. We'll see correlation from this. We know that we have to solve for t value. But in this case, let's key in all the values in, of x in the first column. 86, 81, 83, 89, 80, 74, and 64. Now, on the other hand, we click on y as 3.4, and 1.2. We have all values in place. Always check if the values are correct. 1.2, 1.5, 3.7, and so on. 
3.4. Then on X, we have 64, 74, 80, 89, 83. Okay, that's correct. Then the next thing that we have to do is to click on AC. Once we have AC, we click on option. To look for regression calculation, we click on three. Here you already have the formula for your, because you already have A, B, and R. And for the given, A is equal to 5.88 times uh, plus 0.107x, and the regression is 0 0.804 up to three significant figures. So that's the value that we have. Now, since we have this already, let's do a little more calculations from what we have, okay? We click on AC again. Okay, why AC? So that the data will be still in place. If you click on on, there's a tendency for us to have our data erased. So we click on AC, we click on option, then we move down and look for regression, that's four. Then it shows, we already have the formula for regression earlier, but if you want to see A only, then you can click on that and then you can click on one and equals, and that's A. Then after that, we click on AC, option. Again, click on arrow down for regression four. That's, we want to find the value of B, we click on two, Ah, uh, yeah, two and equals, the value of B will appear. Then same as with R. So we click on AC, option. Now, R, sige, gawin na natin para kompleto na siya. Four, and then if we click on three, we click on equals, then that's the value of our regression. Now, the next is we click on AC. How about the Y and X? Um, what if we want to know the value of Y? when x is 87. So x is 87, we want to know the value of y. Since it's not here, then we don't have the exact value. Then what we can do is we can click on 87. We can click on 87, then we click on option. Then we click on four, arrow down, and then four. And then we click on five. Okay. And then we click on equal sign. And the answer is 3.4. So the value of Y when X, X is 87 is three point, approximately 3.47 or 3.5. Okay, let's continue. What about if 3.47, okay. What about if we want to estimate the value of y? We want to estimate the value of x when y is, wait for a while, when y is 1.9, let's say 1.9. In order to do that, we click on AC, we already click on AC, so we click on 1.9 the value that we're looking for. Then we click on um, option, arrow down, we click on regression, then we click on four for X. And then we click on equal sign, that would be 72. Um, when Y is 1.9, X would be 72.30 or 72.4. There you go. Hope everything is clear. Yeah, and it's already 12 o'clock. I don't want to eat so much of your time. But I have other, ex other examples, but this time this will be value examples. And that's it. Thank you for listening. I hope everything is clear. And I hope we see how we can use um, technology in teaching. The one I'm using here is a Mimeo pad. Okay, that where, so that I can navigate my to the tools in discussion there you go yeah i'll stop sharing now yeah i hope everything is clear 
with all the things that we discussed in class. Yan. Oh, oh, yes. It It's good thing that there's an area to the right. Meron din naman yung area to the right kanina, yung 0 0.70. Kaya lang same value lang din naman siya, 0 0.30. So, yun lang yung ginamit ko for that value. Mm -mm. Yan. Kaya lang sa paghanap lang ng X po yun. Yes. Because I'm looking at the question. Let me look at the questions first. Yan. Okay naman po. I hope we have something to use. Yan. Hello, Hi, Sir Bats. How, parang familiar yeah. ng lugar mo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nandito ko ngayon sa Max. Ay, may ongoing taping kasi. Ang Dep and TV. Oo nga. Yes. So, ayan, siguro man, uh, tawagin natin ang ating guest uh, host this morning, Sir Romel. Hello, yes, Sir Romel. Hi, Sir. Hi, Sir Romel. Ayan. Naku, hindi, hindi si Teacher Reb, no, Sir Buds? Yes, napaka... <laughs> Na-mention niya ng... kanina, kinakabahan siya. <laughs> <laughs> Oo, oh, kinakabahan ako, Sir. Pero na ano, Sir Reb. Pili ko hindi na kinakabahan siya ang Reverie. Excited lang siya. Opo. <laughs> Excited to share yeah. her sick-sickly at umaapaw ng mga uh, teaching strategies in uh, statistics and probability. Congratulations, yes, Teacher sir. Rev. Yes, yes, sir. I hope we, we have something no, to use. I mean, I hope our, our participants also have something in their pocket to share with their students as well from the talk that we shared this morning. Yes. Yeah. So, siguro tawagin na natin ang napaka-supportive nating uh, Casual Educational Unit Head. Ang napaka-guapo at uh, very generous Casual Education Unit Head. So, welcome Mr. Joel C. Serrano. Hello, Sir Joel. Bakit may guapo? Hello, good afternoon. May guapo pa. Maraming salamat <laughs> sa <laughs> napaka-gandang. Thank <laughs> you, uh, Drive. Drive ako eh. Uh, pero I'm still watching ang ating napakagandang uh, tawag dito. Uh, sec ni Ma'am Rebi, no? And I'm better to, to Ma'am Rebi kasi alam natin, ano yan eh, DepEd TV superstar yan. But despite the, <laughs> the success ni Ma'am Rebi sa DepEd TV, eh, laging nandyan yan sa atin, no? Uh, isang tawag mo lang yan, hindi ka magdadalawang isip na saluhin niya yan. So thank you, Ma'am Relby, for this wonderful presentation. Yes, Actually, uh, ito Kaya yung uh, isa sa, ito talaga yung parang idea ng ating workshop. Eh, no? So parang we we illustrate the use of uh, technology sa mga pre-lessons. Pre no? And at the same time, parang sabi nga ni ating kaibigan si Kumparing Kaki Torres, ito yung dapat gumamit tayo ng constructivism. Na parang, you know, uh, we just bigyan natin sa bata kung ano yung ito yung what is this thing all about uh, pero hindi mo ibibigay lahat kumbaga let them see the pattern ng topic let them see yung ano ba yung susunod na pwedeng mangyari and let them explore di ba para mat sila rin on their own matuturin sila at kapag ano ma-enjoy nila yung math topic natin yun ganun lang kasi simple yung yung atin namang gustong ikot sa society. So maraming salamat din Sir Romel for, for pitching for yes, us then. Thank you Sir Romel. Today, no? Congratulations Ma'am Rebi ha. Thank you Sir Romel. Thank you Sir Romel. Thank you Sir Romel. Thank you Sir Romel. Thank you Sir Sabi nga. Yes. Bago, pumi bago pumirma to sa Biba eh, kailangan maan lang natin to, ma mag-guest natin. <laughs> Yes. So, and hindi na ba yung ating isang special guest? Yes. Yes, Sir Joel. So, Hi. alam ko may kita po tayo sa mga susunod na linggo. But at this point, last time we have a very important personality from 
uh, NCR, Department of Education NCR, si Ma'am Bernadette Daran. And at this oh. point, on this particular event, is we have our regional mathematics supervisor in Region 7. Let us all welcome Sir Cesar Restauro. Hi, Sir Cesar. Hello, Hello Sir Cesar. Sir Bads, Sir Ano. Sir, Sir Joel, and I, congratulations po, uh, Teacher Ree, no? So, kilala ko ito, kilala ko ito. Sir. <laughs> Kasama po it, uh, ko po ito sa, ano, sa doong, sa Primas, yeah. Primas, sa Primas yes, po, sir. yes po. Hindi ko ito malimutan. <laughs> okay po, uh, once again, congratulations po, and uh, to Sir Joel, thank you for inviting me as as guest uh, for today's uh, um, video, uh, I mean, uh, activity for. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah. Ayan. So, thank you, sir, Cesar. So, talagang, tulad na na sinasabi natin every week, no? this cash and tech session serves as an avenue to sa na meet natin yung mga friends natin from other regions and other parts of the country and it's a point talaga na talagang ang ating mga speakers uh, sa ating Casio Tech Session ay top caliber at talagang very uh, competitive and talagang master nila yung kanilang tinuturo. And at this point, siguro let's have our last few messages from Sir Romel. Sir Romel, alam ko meron kong iimbitahan para sa next week. Yeah! Opo, ayan, iniimbitahan. Pahal ko po ang lahat para sa uh, katertip po. Ang inyong lingkod po ay mag-alagi ng ilang mga at ay siguraduhin po natin na mag at umakapaw sa ating discussion sa darating na sa atagal. Thank you very much, Sir Bad, Sir Joel, Sir Bad, congrats again. Thank you. Ayan. Parang nag- Ma'am Red, kailan ba yung mga next episodes mo sa Deped TV? Ah, yes, yes. I would like to, I would like to take this opportunity to Invite everyone po on DepEd TV for Senior High School Statistics. Uh, we started already uh, last October 5. So we already had our session. Um, last week, we had our session on with Casio Classways. We, we, we have... We use technology. That's what's wonderful about DepEd TV. You know? they, they are open to different, different ways of doing things so we also used um if there's a need for calculation and it's really a challenging calculation we have to to use the technology so part of our endeavor also is to help our students learn from difficult although it's a difficult and challenging <coughs> items it will be easier for them to see the big picture and see the ease in the use of technology in discussion. It is part of our next endeavor. So we have our next, I'm, if, if it's not this afternoon, it will be next week that we'll have our session for statistics. So yeah, you'll see me for statistics lesson. So I hope you join us in DepEd TV. Yeah. It's, it's a great experience as well. And thank you. And also, yes, sir. Sir Cesar. Yes po, Sir Cesar. Sir Cesar, siguro mga next episode, maybe we can invite your teachers from uh, for, from your region para mag-conduct ng Casio Seminar. What do you think? Huh? I'm, I'm Medyo mahaba-haba pa itong session. <laughs> yeah, Thank of course, course. of course. Me. In advance po. Magagaling ang, magagaling <laughs> ang mga Cebuano <laughs> teachers magturo. Uh, Sir Romel, Ms. Riri, uh, uh, abangan ko yan po, sir, ha? Uh, abangan ko yan po. Ikaw na bahala mag-nominate kung sino teacher mo, ha? Teachers natin dito sa Central Visayas po. Yes, oh, sir. Sige, asahan namin yan. We have great teachers there as well. 
Ah, uh, we have great Kamusta yes. ka daw sabi ni Sir Dolph pala? Ah. Uh, ano po? Kamusta ka daw sabi ni Sir Dolph? Ay, yeah. Asan na ba ngayon si Sir Dolph? Sir Dolph. <laughs> <laughs> Parang uh, Sir Buddy, okay ka na? Parang yes, wala medyo bumalik na ang internet so. connection. Oh, yeah. Ito mm, talaga okay. mag-live pero sabi na nila no. Mawawala pero babalik din. <laughs> so ayan, I think nakapag-message na si yeah. Sir Joel. Nakapag-message yeah. na yan. Sir Joel, last message to our viewers. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, stay tuned ulit. Next week naman, uh, yung ating guest natin, si Sir Romel uh, John Abalye. Siya yung nag-invite na para sa... Yeah, ano what they call it? Genmat, right? Genmat. It will be yeah. Genmat. Hi, so, sir. So, sir, buddy, pumayag na si Sir Cesar, ha? Next episodes, kanyang mga teachers naman from Cebu. Yes, sir. Akabangan natin yan. <laughs> so, now, let's have a memory. Yan, marami pa thank tayo. Thank you po, Sir Joel. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Sir Cesar. Yes, thank yes. you po. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank, thank you for your time, Sir Cesar. Okay, thank you po. Sige po, God bless. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah. Let's have my library. Opo, yeah, and thank you so much and I hope that you see the use of, the ease of the use of technology in our discussion in class. Sabi nga po ni Sir Joel, that's that had been an endeavor of Kasha to be a blessing to other people as well. Uh, the emulator had been a blessing to me as a teacher in my discussion, in my masters and all and and the calculator as well, the the actual calculator of the one I have here. Yan yung aking gadget for life. So this is something that can help us teach her. And I hope we invest. We never stop learning, no? Because that's our passion. That's that's our drive. Learning math takes time. Sabi ko nga dun sa ending ko lagi sa spiel ko sa extra. Truly, don't stop until you're proud. Learning math takes time. Yan, sir. Thank you so much, dear teachers, for being with us this morning. So talagang napaka, ano, no? I like that message na talagang ever since talaga na nung, nung kumasa ko sa public school, talaga nakikita ko na yung mga casual calculators na ginagamit ng ating mga public school system. And talagang as time passes, may medyo nag evolve at nag innovate ang ating mga casual calculators. At uh, talaga namang sa amin sa EdTech Unit, lagi nakasuporta ang casual calculators Philippines, lalo na sa mga programs and mga webinars namin. Tulad nito na consistently we are having this casual tech sessions every Saturday. Okay. And at napaka-proud ako sabihin na talagang lahat ng mga speakers natin dito ay kundi exemplary teachers, mga outstanding teachers at master teachers and regular teachers na naman napagaling. Wala kang dapat itawon sa ating mga speakers. With that, thank you Sir Lumel and thank you Ma'am Revery. Thank you Sir. 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 And that concludes our Kasha Tech webinar session this afternoon and hopefully marami tayong matutuhan sa ating session ngayong araw and Just like uh, sa mga sinasabi po namin previously, as part of the Department of Education, it is our responsibility to support the programs and activities of our uh, department, especially in providing quality education to our learners. What we are experiencing right now is something new to us, but we teachers are flexible enough to adopt with the changes that is happening in our society. With the use of discussion calculators and cash emulators, Teachers will be equipped on how to deliver a blended learning approach and online learning approach using these different emulators that we can download for free. And you can visit the official Facebook page of Casio Calculators Philippines. And you can also visit the Casio page at https colon double backslash edu.casio.com. Dito po natin na-download ang mga emulators for free with 90-day trial. And, so na sinasabi ko, sama-sama tayo, tulong-tulong tayo sa pagsulong ng edukalidad sa ating bansa. Muli, 
Ako po si Salvador E. Malansala the first, teacher badge na lagi nagsasabi, COVID lang yan, guru tayo, sama-sama tayo sa pagsulong ng edukalidad sa ating bansa. Kita-kits po ulit tayo next Saturday, dito lang sa It's a Math Tech Day, Casio Technology Session, hatid sa atin ng Educational Technology Unit in partnership with Casio Calculators Philippines. Paalam and see you all again next week.